Hey everybody, how's it going? Brad Hussey here, and this is the Art, Business, and Craft of Web Design, where we talk, learn, and play all things web design. And in this free web design course I've been doing, we're gonna be digging into colors and color theory and how you can use color in your websites and in your brands and in your client websites and look like you know what you're doing. Let's do that. All right, all right. So today we're gonna to be talking about color and color theory. Now, let me just get this out of the gate right away. The whole study of color is exactly that, a study. There's, it's an art, it's a science. There's a lot that goes into color and understanding color. People make full careers out of understanding color and utilizing color. So in no way, shape or form are we gonna even scratch the surface here, but that's a good thing because the whole point here is with this course is to get you up and running quickly so you don't spend a full year studying color. You don't need to know everything about color. I'm a big fan of the 80-20 principle, so that's 20% of your efforts yield 80% of the results. Same thing goes for knowledge and application of knowledge. Color, if you know about 20% of the study, the art and the science of color in context of web design, looking at it through the lens of web design, it's gonna get you 80% of the way. You really don't need to know all the different color schemes off by heart. You don't need to understand hex codes off by heart. We have tools at our disposal. We have inspiration, we have examples and templates. We don't need to know everything inside and out. It's not really, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is that you understand the principles, you understand why it works, how it works, you kind of get the fundamentals down, wipe your hands clean, move on to the next thing. The whole point here is I want you to be able to build beautiful websites, understand the principles that underlie that, and specifically for you web developers out there, because I know there's a lot of you watching this, you're good at building, but you don't know the design aspect. You don't know how to how to make what you're building look good, or you don't know why it looks good or why it doesn't look good, or maybe you want to communicate better with a designer understanding the principles and that common language is the whole point with this course. So this is an introduction to color in web design and I'm hoping that I can keep it real simple for you. I'll do my best to make it really simple to understand and digest, give you some practical applications and send you on your way so we can move on to the next lesson and, and be a better web designer even if it's just by knowing 20% of these topics. So color theory. Now you're gonna see me switching back and forth uh, with the spelling of color, color with a U, I'm Canadian. I think that that's the proper way of spelling. It comes from the British, um, Americans, they drop the U so they can have a differentiating factor in their language. So I'm going to go back and forth between color with the U, staying true to my roots and color without the U because most of you are American and I don't want to upset you too much. All right. Color theory, some thoughts, some questions. What are we going to talk about? What, are we, what am I going to try and touch on in this lesson so that you can understand the fundamentals of color theory? There's millions of color combinations. Which do you choose? Well, we don't need millions. We just need a few. I'll show you them. What do different colors mean or convey? You've heard that blue means happy and red means mad and gold means luxurious and white means blue and black means strong. Let's... Let's revisit these things and see, do these things actually convey what they say they convey? Or how can we use that? Does blue really mean happy? Or can it mean something else? And so we'll get into that. What are some terminology? There's words, there's hex codes, there's RGB, there's cyan, magenta, there is a hue, saturation, luminance, all of that. What does it mean? Let's find out, okay? What are good color choices? There are good color choices. There are bad color choices. A lot of you out there, especially you developers, not pointing any fingers, not so good at color choices. But guess what? A lot of designers aren't so good at color choices. I'm gonna confess right here, when I choose colors, I kinda of just choose colors I like. I just have a design background so I can kinda of get my way around. But in studying more, when I'm preparing this lesson on color, I understand, you know what? Maybe when I'm choosing color schemes for my websites and my own brands and stuff, I could consider some of these things. So with that said, is black and white a color choice? Is that a color? Is it not a color? Can I just do black and white if I don't want to choose a color? 
Let's get into that. How can we be confident in our color choices, okay? And are there tools we can use to speed up the process and make it really easy so we don't have to think so much about what colors look good and don't? And what's the proper way to spell color? We already touched on that. I think it's with a U. You think it's with a no. Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Color, it gives your design meaning. And different colors can convey a feeling, emotions, a vibe, emotions. Color theory, what is it? Well, Sir Isaac Newton, we know that guy. Back way in the 1600s, um, he came up with the color wheel concept. All the colors we see and experience can be on a spectrum of color. Okay, we've seen that wheel. We've all seen it, whether it's at the paint store, at the home hardware, um, in Photoshop. You see it everywhere. Like, check this out. Here's my document. I can go to the text here and I want to change the color. Well, boom, I click the color wheel. Here it is. See the color wheel? This is a color wheel with all of the different color combinations kind of mashed into one. Hard to understand what to choose. A lot of people, when they choose colors, just go like this and they hope for the best. But really, what do you do to choose colors, okay? So you can see here, we got hex. We'll dig into that a little bit. We got red, green, blue. What about CMYK? What's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black? What are these, what's this opacity and alpha channels and all this sort of stuff, okay? We'll, we'll talk about that. So with Sir Isaac Newton, he came up with the color wheel, and now we use color wheels for all sorts of color choices. It's both an art and a science. The art meaning it's like abstract, we can play around, we can break rules, but because there's a science to it, we know that there's, there's uh, proven principles and formulas and actual, you know, there's an actual study of it, of, of what is. Science is the study of what is, isn't it? So they look at the actual colors, what works, what doesn't, what feeling does this convey, is this tension, is this repose, blah, 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 blah. Primary colors. There are three primary colors. This gets a little bit confusing here, okay? I'll try and make it simple. The three primary colors traditionally are red, blue, and yellow. The technical terms that we should be using are cyan, magenta, and yellow because prior to the web and screens, we painted and we did things on paper. And so cyan, magenta, and yellow are more closely to what our eyeballs would see. But with the, the advent of the screen, webs and screens, RGB, red, green, and blue. Those are the primary colors we're going to concern ourselves with. Now, if you are a designer and you're doing for print and you're doing print design and graphic design, you're going to be a little bit more colorful and your primary colors are going to be your red, blue, and your yellow or cyan, magenta, yellow. But for most of us in the web design world, RGB, red, green, blue, that's something that, especially if you're a coder or designer developer and you've worked with hex codes before, you'll recognize RGB. On your television screen, you know how you used to like plug in your Nintendo into the back of the TV? You had to take the red, the green, and the blue to communicate the data from the machine to the television so we could see it. It's a combination of red, green, and blue. So those are primary colors, okay? Now let's talk about some jargon, the words that are used to describe color theory. So we, like I said, the primary colors, red, or in this order, blue, red, yellow, but red, yellow, blue, these are the three primary colors. There are three of them, okay? Pretty much all color is made up of these three colors. Now in the print world, traditionally, before screens, we used paper and print. Um, color was seen differently. We didn't have screens and these hard blue and, and um, green and red, or yellow rather. Blue, red, yellow, gets confusing, see what I mean? Cyan, magenta, yellow, look more like that. Blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow. You can kind of see, same idea, just more sophisticated looking. On screens, we typically use as our primary colors, red, green, blue, RGB. Pretty much moving forward, we're just gonna be referencing RGB, okay? Those are your three primary colors. Secondary colors, that's another term. There are, no, there are three secondary colors and it's the combination of the primaries. So we got red and blue make magenta. Blue and green make cyan. Red and green make yellow. All three together make white. Now this is why if you were to look at like a, a color um, wheel or like if you're to play around with like the color wheel here and you see the RGB sliders, this is just using Keynote, but the same thing would be in Photoshop or any tool that you are using to play around with color. You can see here we got red, green, and blue. Those are your three primary colors. Now check this out, CMYK. These are, those are the three primary colors, but in a more traditional print-based sense. 
cyan, magenta, yellow, and then the K means black. So black, let's, let's go to RGB. Black is the absence of red, green, and blue. The absence of color in the screen is black. The combination of all three, which in RGB in that color mode is, is it goes up to from zero to 255. Those are the, the numbers. That's the scale zero to 255. Zero means an absence of 255, 255 means full. So then 255, 255, 255 is full white combination of red, blue, and green. So we got red, green, and blue here. The full combination is white. That's why you can't see the title here. Now, if I wanted black, it's zero, zero, zero. And then any combination of these is kind of like mixing paints, but you're mixing screen colors to create different variations of what it looks like. So you can kind of see that it's turning a different color here or a little bit more here, but it's more black. Now let's go to a, a more visual view of what primary colors are. So we got the color wheel in the RGB sense. So I'm using red, green, and blue. We got a triangle, an equilateral triangle, red, green, blue. That's it on the color wheel. Okay, this is the science. Secondary, you flip that triangle around on the color wheel and you got magenta, yellow, and cyan. So that's the combination. So primary is red, blue, and green. Combination, yellow, magenta, cyan. Primary, secondary. Okay, tertiary is the combination of a primary and a secondary. And there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there are names for them in the, in the RGB sense. It's like blue, yellow, or, or red, orange, uh, blue, green, things like that. I'm not going to get into that because again, you can, I'll put some resources in the description below for you to re to reference, but you don't need to know all of that stuff because who cares? Who cares? Choose a color palette that works, understand why it works and the, the conveys the feeling and emotion you're going for that matches the brand. You're good to go. Let's keep it simple. Let's keep it real. Okay. So th th that's the theory that I wanted to share with you. Now you've probably heard of temperature when it comes to color. And if you haven't, well, here you go. Temperature is how warm or how cold things are on the color wheel. It's split down the middle and you've got more warm colors here. So you've got like your pink, your red, your orange, your yellow, you know, the mixture there. I can't remember what that color is called. And then the cool, you got the blues, you got the greens, you got the cyan. Okay. Those are more cool colors, more warm colors. And that is kind of like if I were to, I can actually choose how warm I want my color of my light to be. So, and this is measured in a, in a different um, ke Kelvin, I believe, but, but we won't go into that, but I'll show you this is right now. I've got it on full, full blue. Now, if I were to change it, now I have a um, color temperature that's more warm. In fact, very warm. I look very orange, but if I mix the two and then I have more of the blue, more of the orange, anywhere in between, as you can kind of see there. So I can play around with color on my lights. Now, the other thing that you would want to concern yourself with is tint. That's how much kind of pink or how much green hex co codes. You're going to, as a web designer, you're going to be using these all the time. Um, hex codes are basically there's six digits that start with a hash mark. Okay. That's not called a hashtag folks. It's a hash mark or a hash. That's where hashtag came from because tagging is like linking to something. It's a hash. It's a hash hash mark. Okay. So hash mark six digits. All zeros here is black color wheel hex color. You can see hash mark. If I were to go zero, 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 it's black. Now, basically you can see it in conjunction here with RG and B. Basically the first two digits are how much red. The, f the second two digits are how much green and the th last two digits are how much blue R G B red, green, blue. So if I were to like do full green F is, so there are, uh, letters and numbers. The letters go from a to F. So a would mean like, the least amount F would be the most and then zero to nine. So zero, zero, F, F, zero, zero is full green. F, F, zero, 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 zero is full red. Zero, 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 F, F, full blue. Now, if we start combining the two, 
You can see now I'm taking the two center digits and I'm gonna bring those up. And now I got cyan, which is 00FFFF, okay? See how that works? And then you can see if I were to slowly drag this, you go from zero, let's start with the red. So actually it's the numbers first, zero to nine, and then A to F. So this is how much red I'm adding. So I'm starting with zero, so absence of color here. And I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm going, so it's zero, nine, and then zero A, B, zero, A, uh, zero D, zero E, zero F, and then one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, and then you see how it cycles through? Now, do you really need to know this? Does it really matter? No, it doesn't, okay? But that's just how it works. So let's just make it white, which is just F, 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 okay? Those are hex codes. You're gonna use those in your CSS. You're gonna use those in your Photoshop documents. You're gonna use that when you're doing digital design, web design, color schemes. So this is probably why you watch this video is because you wanna know about, more about color, my Canadian came out there, No more about um, color schemes. Establish color combinations. There are a few, uh, namely five, could be six. Technically there's more. The ones that matter are less. Let me show you. We've got monochromatic. So this is using tints, shades, and saturation of the same color. Now what is saturation? That's how much color there is. So I'd say in this color wheel, I'm, there's a purple kind of color here. And this color scheme is with the hex codes and the RGB codes are, it's monochromatic. It's kind of just like a singular color and variations of it. You'd use monochromatic if you wanted to just kind of make your design around a singular color. Uh, it's a strong choice, but it also doesn't give much um, balance. It's just kind of very singular focused. Now, another color scheme would be the complementary color scheme. It's based on two colors on opposite ends of the color wheel. And so, in all these color schemes, you would use, use a dominant color. You don't just have random colors and just make everything random colors. It would be crazy. You choose a dominant color, your kind of key color. So in this, uh, probably the dominant color would be uh, this kind of C C2433A, and then on the opposite end would be this more uh, green type blue color. And, and then you use variations from there, and that would be a complementary color. So complementary is like, two colors on opposite ends, and then you base the color scheme on that. Um, analogous, now complementary is something you'd probably use more often for your web designs. You got a main color, you got a black, you got your white, and then you have um, like button colors, which are gonna be your primary color, and a secondary color, or maybe like links could be a different color, and you'd use a complementary color scheme for that. Analogous, this is based on three colors side by side on the color wheel. So there's a lot of tension here, um, and th they're very close, and, and, and it's a strong choice, but there's not much, you know, um, excitement here. And it's if you want to go for a strong choice, if you want to go for something that's very uh, one direction in color, that would be more analogous. Triadic, this is where you're starting to get a little wacko, a little crazy. Equilateral triangle, three colors spaced equally apart on the color wheel, and it creates kind of a really interesting, vibrant look, depending on the color choices that you're using. Um, and it could be the right choice. It could be a little too much. Uh, it's a very strong intentional choice going triadic. And then there's tetradic, which is four evenly spaced colors uh, on the color wheel. Now to bring this into kind of more um, practical, how, how does this work? How do I know when to choose tetradic or monochromatic or any of this sort of stuff? Let's just pull up, because we're, this is about web design, let's pull up some websites. First website I want to pull up for you here, it's actually a tool called Coolors, 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 C-O-O-L-O-R-S.co. There's a few of these tools, but basically it's a color scheme generator based on the science of um, color theory. Great tool. Now I've talked to some graphic design uh, friends and students. This, it, you got to be hesitant with this because you can't just say, okay, perfect. There's the perfect color scheme. There's actually, there's an art. So there's a science. It'll show you colors that work perfectly together in whatever fashion you want them to work, but is it conveying the meaning that you want? That's where the art comes in. So the science is, this is just, it works. It's a perfect monochromatic color scheme. It's 100% perfect, but is it conveying what you want it to convey? It depends. So let's start the generator, coolors.co, C-O-O-L-O-R-S.co. And basically it pulls up colors and you get to make some change some settings here so by default 
you know, you can just press space bar. Don't do it too much. You'll give yourself a seizure. Um, and I quite literally mean that they actually put like a disclaimer. Like if you have seizures from looking at screens, don't press the space bar a lot. You can give yourself a seizure. Anyway, generate method is where you can change, you know, this will just do auto. It will just choose whatever monochromatic analogous complementary triadic tetradic. You've seen, you can see here split complementary and square. Won't get into that. Um, but let's choose a monochromatic color scheme. And then if I just hit space bar, it will just choose monochromatic color schemes, as you can see. Now, if I have a color, a, a primary color that I my brand is based on, then let's work from that. So let's say my primary uh, dominant color, rather, not primary, I don't want to confuse my jargon here, uh, FF3366. So it's kind of like a pink type color that I've been playing with. And now I'm going to choose that color. So you can see it here, I'm going to lock it. And now I want to generate a monochromatic color scheme based on this dominant color. Check it out. Now, obviously that's not the style I'm going for. It's just, that's like creamsicle, full pink. That's not my brand. Um, mine is, uh, I go for like kind of a darker black. It's sophisticated, but it's got a bit of play to it. You've seen the tracing around my head. You've seen, you know, if I pull up my website here, here's an example, one of my courses, the essentials course for freelancing. So we got the black, we got the pink. So it's a strong choice. And then I got this uh, accent color here for the buttons. Now, to be honest, I just chose these colors. If I looked at this, I might realize that I need to tweak these colors to be more um, scientific in my approach. I just kind of chose colors that I liked uh, that seemed to work, but um, probably there's a more strategic approach that I should use. Um, now you could see it here. So I'm not going for like this cutesy, this cutesy vibe. It's strong and sophisticated with my font choice and the typography, but it's also, Hey, take it easy, like lighten up a bit. That's kind of my style. So go back to our colors here. So I'm not going monochromatic. I want to do something that's more, uh, if I generate the method, I change that to complementary. So let's generate complementary colors based on the, the pink. And there we go. So we kind of got this green here that I was playing with right here. So those colors work in a complementary sense. So the dominant color is this pink and the, the secondary um, um, or complementary color would be this. So I'm going to lock that and I can actually play around with the shades. So I can see if I like a particular shade a little bit better with my dominant color here. So let's actually say, ah, I kind of like the lighter one. We're going here. There we go. I lock it down and I'm going to cycle through. So I'm still going complimentary here. And let's say, you know what? Maybe I don't want to do complimentary. I actually want to go for more of a um, triadic color scheme. Locked. I still lock the pink and, and that kind of lighter sea green. Let's see what happens here. Okay. It's a little, you know, like bleh, not liking this. I don't like it. So maybe, and this is where I already kind of know what I want to do with this, but let's just, let's just see what comes up with, let's go for a tetradic, see what happens. Okay. I like that yellow that I just saw, but maybe I missed it. Okay. Now these aren't working for me because I've locked down these two colors and it's not generating a color scheme that I quite like. So the way, the way that I would do this is you got to have a black, you got to have a white. I like having a dominant color, a secondary color or a complementary one rather. And then you got to have a dark that's flat black. Three, three, three is kind of lighter. Let's just go like flat black. Okay. Lock it down. Now I'm just going to go generate method and go to auto and see what it suggests based on these three colors I just chose. Interesting. This is a little bit more, say, um, uh, not what I'm looking for. Okay, I like that yellow. It's very close to the one that I use. Okay, which leaves me with this. Probably what I would end up doing is I would just leave this. I would change this just to a white. And let's, let's call that my color scheme, which is basically the color scheme that I use on Freelancing Freedom. I got my black, I got my gold, I got my white, I got my pink, and I got that... Uh, cyan type sea green color, uh, as you can see here. So what I would do there, I could save this color scheme. I could export it as a PDF, as an image I can copy the URL, send it to a designer or whatever. Uh, I got the CSS here. Here's the actual, you can see all the different CSS codes. If I want to do hex, HSL, uh, RGB, 
lots of different ways you can export that. So that would be like how you generate a color scheme using a tool like coolors.co. That's what I recommend. Now they give you inspiration. So I can go to coolors.co and you can just look at some inspiration that they have. So explore trending palettes, just to give some ideas. This is kind of what I would recommend. If you're looking for an idea for your color scheme, for your designs, you could just kind of look here and go, okay, what kind of, what am I trying to convey here? This is where the art comes in. So the science, you can leave it to the tool to understand this is a palette that works technically on the color wheel. But what are you trying to convey? Let's say you have a really, uh, let's say gold gym. So we got gold gym, obviously it's, Gold's Gym is trying to convey strength, um, uh, physique, um, let's say, what else? Like crushing your goals, you know, look, we got strong people. We got a lady here just like crushing it on the rope thing. This dude's just benching his weight uh, times two. So it's obviously a very strong, um, muscular, bold choice, but it's also, it's not gonna go with like, you know, light pink or like fuchsia or cream with like nice kind of like sans serif or scripted fonts that would make no sense. Strong font choices, all cap headlines, black, white, and then their primary color is this yellow and their complementary is this blue. Now check this out. I bet you if I were to take this color, so I'm going to, I'm going to find the color here. I'm going to inspect it and pull up the hex code and I can find it right here. So FDO, which is which means that's a short code for FFDDOO or 00 rather. So FDO. Let's go to our Coolors palette here and let's just let's just restart here. But we're going to choose a color. Watch this. We're going to go Coolors .co start the generator FD0. Let's put that in there and see what Coolors generates. All right, so FFDD00, there's the gold gym gold. We're gonna lock that and we're gonna generate a uh, complementary color scheme. <laughs> there's our blue popping up. They have a lighter blue, there it is. It's probably not far off. So if I were to actually go to gold's gym, here's that blue right there, which the hex code for that one is 00ADEF. And so if I'm looking here, probably not that far off. Let's view the shades. So it's a little bit different, but you know, let's type it in zero, zero A D E F. So there we go. If I lock that and then let's say I, I like these two colors and they're complementary. generally generate method. Let's go auto and let's just see what coolers comes up with. Ooh, this is looking gold's gym. Like let's lock that black down. It works. And they're probably not going to go for those colors. Greens, it's looking a little too easy. I don't know what's happening here. You know, probably what they'll go for now is if they need a third color. So they got their dominant, which is the yellow or the gold. They got their supporting color, which is this light blue. They got the black for text and probably they'd have a white and maybe they'd have like a third color in there. So let's lock this white down, which would probably be something like for the footer, probably like orange or maybe something that doesn't clash with the gold something more muted, that. That's like a gold gym color palette. Probably could find that. See gray, black, gold, and blue. Those are like their colors. If you go around the site, you can see it's used in that manner. Their primary color, which is this gold, is gonna be their primary button. Secondaries, membership. So you can see how there you go, how this works in practice. So that's Gold's Gym. Apple coming up with a different, uh, they have a different style. Apple gets to play around with all sorts of things. They have like brands within brands. They have the full Apple brand, which is very black, white, and kind of silvery gray, but they have brands within brands. So their Big Sur uh, Mac OS operating system, they're going off of these like really funky sort of 80s style colors. They're just going straight colors here. So I can actually inspect and check this out. And you can see if I go to their CSS um, variables, they got indigo, blue, pink, green, and azure. There's the hex codes and they're going with those fun, like kind of bold choices in their colors that matches like the OS, the operating system. 
You can see how they use it. They toggle through the colors. This is a really advanced uh, style of choosing colors. They know what they're doing. I know I pull Apple up a lot as my examples. I just use it because the benchmark for the designers that they have and they're cutting edge and leading designers when it comes to both hardware and software design. Um, Okay, let's go to Statomic.com. Statomic, they are a headless CMS and they're all about that 80s funky style, wild, crazy, let's do some crazy stuff. Um, pinks, blues, yellows, but, but in a very bold choice. You can see here, same with their font choices. They're going for like this distressed web page look, vivid, bespoke, radical. That's like, word, those are words that communicate what Statomic is. Statomic isn't going like, let's say WordPress.com WordPress is going to be understated. You got the blue, kind of a little bit of a magenta type color here. It's very understated. If I were to go to wordpress.org, it's very bland and that's their choice. That's what it, that's, it doesn't want to sway you in one direction or the other. This is its brand. It's very kind of like open source, do what you want sort of thing. Whereas Statomic is like, we are crazy. We're wild. People like us like things like this, you know, that's, they very much pit themselves against being different than WordPress. Okay. So you can just see that even the design choices here, the pinks, the creamy yellows, the black, the font choices, the, you know, interesting choices, bad boys. I just found this website on an awards website, big black, white, strong choices. I think there's no colors here. So this is kind of like a monochromatic primary color is the, or the, the main color is black. And then there's a red for a link color there, which again, the choice of red and black and white, very strong, very aggressive. I mean, they're going for the bad boys styler from that movie with Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Obviously this is the style they're going for. Um, here's another website I've pulled up in a previous video sophisticated, these kind of more understated colors, the creams instead of white, the kind of royal blue with this kind of pink color. Let's try this out. If I were to take a screenshot of this exact image and I go to coolors.co, I can actually drag that image and generate a color scheme off of an image. So this is another idea for coming up with a color scheme. So I'm gonna drag this in here, right in coolors.co. It's gonna pull up the image and I can actually make color scheme. So if, let's choose my dominant color. Dominant color is gonna be this blue, okay? And here, this definitely kind of this pink kind of color here. Uh, third color, probably something more along the lines of, let's see, something about here. We're gonna need a kind of a white, and then let's see if there's another variation I can grab. There, so color scheme based off of this image. So if you like an image, pull it in the coolers.co, let's view the palette and see what it generates. Here's the hex codes. You can see like that, let's see, maybe open in the generator. Here's that color palette we just did from this image uh, on this site right here. Probably pretty darn close to the color scheme that we generated here. You can play with it a bit. See, see how that works? Pretty, pretty cool. What else? Let's pull up another site. Hawaiian Airlines. We think of, this is where colors convey feelings and emotions. We've heard that like dark black, blue conveys like strength or aggression or masculinity or uh, royalty. If you're going for my royal blue and the gold, black and gold, kind of more sophisticated. Uh, white with like a pop of pink, that's light, it's happy. We got yellows, we got pinks. These colors convey different emotions. And do they actually, well, yes. Is it a perfect science? No, it's more of an art. Cause you can have, I've, I've worked with clients that said, I don't wanna use red cause red means aggression. I'm like, well, no, red, it doesn't have to mean aggression. I'm not on hawaiianairlines.com dreaming of going back to Hawaii and looking at their booking button, this kind of more pink red and going, you know what? I am offended that this button is red. I am, I, it's, it's frightening me because of how aggressive it is. No, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work in that sort of red means this, black means this, blue means this. It can mean that, but in context. So in context of Hawaiian airlines, what am I thinking? 
I'm thinking luau's. I'm thinking Waikiki Beach. I'm thinking North Shore. I'm thinking waves, warm. I'm thinking uh, aloha, oi, aloha. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm there. You serve up some purple. You serve up some of this kind of salmony pink. You serve up blue. You serve up azure. You serve up uh, colors of the plumeria, the colors of the hibiscus. I am in Hawaii right now. Okay. I even have a warm, tingly feeling in my body. So that's, it does. The colors of your brand, of your choices, of your palettes can convey feelings and emotions. Just as going to this bad boys for life website, it's like, bro, it's aggressive. Okay. It's strong. Whereas this, I'm drinking, I'm drinking a little bit of port while I'm just listening to this. That. Okay, that's that's the feel I'm going for here. Muted, under you know, understated, monochromatic. It's nothing crazy and tetradic or complimentary. It's gentle. It's kind of that's that's how that is. Whereas professional, uh, creative, like the Mac OS Big Sur, it's creative. It's modern, but it's also strong. Um, let's go to Elgato.com. It's uh, a streaming tool. I'm using it right here on my desk streaming content it's modern it's it's uh pops out on your screen it's it's this uh, choices of blues and blacks and whites it's breaking boundaries it's bold it's just strong choice you know but it's also pleasant you know it's not light and gentle it's strong it's saying like we are the best uh product on the market for this and generally they are um so yes colors and color schemes they they create different feelings and different emotions. Um, and it can be difficult and confusing when it comes to deciding what colors to use. So I'm going to give you a couple tips and, um, hopefully this can give you something to work with here, something to think about color theory tips, keep it simple and subtle. You know, when in doubt, just keep it simple, keep it subtle. If I'm choosing a color scheme for my website, I personally like black and white and then just like, throw in a little bit of color, like one dominant color. And if that's the choice that you make, that's a good choice. Okay. Keep it simple. People appreciate simplicity and it's a strong choice as well, where you can't really go wrong. Black, white, whatever your color is. If I'm open up couleurs again, and I'm saying, you know what? I want to choose a color choice here and I'm starting, I want to go black. Let's just go hard black, triple zero. That's the hex code. And I want this, let's say, you know what? I like this creamy white. Let's drag that over here next to the black. There is my color scheme. I'm gonna lock these two. Now, all I need is just a complimentary color for my buttons and links. What am I doing? Space bar. Think about, you know, what vibe am I going for? What emotion am I conveying? Is this like a, you know, a food blog? Is this a software company? Is it a creative agency? Is it a uh, pet store? Is it, a, is it a children's toy store? What is it? Okay. What's your client? Who are they? What about you? What's the brand? So think about, okay, what's that color? What is it conveying? I could see this. Ooh, this is fun. I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm in Latin America here. I don't know why, but I'm thinking, Ooh, like I want spicy food. This a little more understated than the last one. This is a little fun. I'm overseas now. Understated. Oh, something just popped out to me here. This color over here, I like this. This this color, I don't know the name, but you know what? I'm going to lock it down. And let's just call that my color scheme right there. Get rid of these last two. Watch this. Boom, boom. There's my color scheme. Simple color scheme. Now what you can do is you can export that as an image, CSS, PDF. I recommend exporting it as PDF. So I'm going to open it up. And it's going to give you data on this color scheme that you would not believe. So check this out. So we got our three colors, color one, two, and three. Here's the hex code, the RGB, CMYK, and the name. So they call this rich black. This is called Isabelline. Isn't that way better than just white? It's like kind of a creamy white. It's obviously off white. And then this is sea green Crayola. Now that is fun. This is a brilliant color scheme. Now let's play around with the uh, shades the hues, the saturation. So right here we got shades. So these are the full black versions. So 
uh, black, 100% white, and then the shades in between. So you can go, you know what? I actually want a more understated version. Let's choose this one or a, a more bold version, this one. So you can see how you can play around with some colors there. Let's check out the temperature. Remember I talked about how much blue or how much red is in that, in that, uh, in the color, just like this. There's more, here we are right here, more orange, more red, more blue. Same thing. Let's choose. This is a full kind of full saturation or full temperature. Uh, red, full temperature blue, somewhere in between. Do we want it to be cooler, warmer? What are we trying to convey? Okay. And then right here is just um, uh, the hue. This is the hue. So this is taking the hue and you can see different hues of black. There's no hue. It's an absence of color. It's always black. Uh, this more white, this Isabelline color shade is, it's, there's a little bit of something there. And then here we got the full colors uh, with different hues based on that um, kind of sea green color that we had here, different hues. So I just generated an amazing color scheme based on black, white, and one color, okay? Now this is where it gets fun. You get to play around with it. But here's my recommendation though. Stay away from hard and full colors, like full red or full green or full yellow or full blue. It looks like, um, like a, it looks childish. Um, now, if that's your choice, if that's an intentional choice, then, then that's, that's one thing. Like, but you want to play around with the hue, the saturation, the luminance for a more sophisticated look. And you can do that in Photoshop. Here I am with Photoshop. And if I'm pulling up a color, like let's say this color here, and I want to change the color, well, I pull up the color wheel. Here's the color picker. And you can play with the RGB as we've kind of learned here. But you can also play with hue, saturation, okay? Drag things around. So instead of full red, what if we change, you know, we, we move it to a little bit more, of, instead of the full red, we just add a little white to it, okay? You see how that works? Or you can kind of add a little orange to it. You know, a darker orange, you know, more black, more white. So that can get tricky, which is why it's better to uh, base things off of a proven color palette. Coolors um, is a great website for it. This is not a sponsored post uh, or a sponsored video by Coolors. I just, I really appreciate the tool. So I recommend using it. So that's what I recommend when it comes to choosing, kind of keeping it simple, uh, play with more subtle colors and choose a dominant color for your palette. Don't just say, okay, you know, I like these colors. They're all equal. No, you're probably going to want to most, if you go with black as your dominant color, then that's going to have a different feel than if you have this son kind of sea green as your dominant color, right? Or white as your dominant color with black as text and the green as links. It depends on how you use it. Um, when in doubt, like I said, start with black and white with a single accent color. Now this is mainly advice for so the uncreative person, the person who's new to web design or the developer who doesn't know what to do when it comes to color choice. Keep it simple, keep it subtle, add in a dominant color, play with these scientific color schemes with a tool like Coolors or other tools to come up with palette ideas. Look at different examples, observe great examples and study why it works. So if you're trying to go for a feel, you go, you know what? Our brand is more like a gold's gym or our brand is more like, um, you know, a Elgato stream deck or our brand is more like, you know, uh, the dollar store or whatever. They have intentional color choices and you can see what works and why it doesn't work and how you can incorporate that. So observe great examples and use a tool for helping determine a palette rather than just picking random colors in Photoshop or, or Adobe XD or Figma, Sketch, use a tool like Coolors.co, observe great and interesting examples. Coolors has an Instagram uh, pa uh, tool where they give you palettes. And if you, if you like a palette, if you go, oh, this is exactly the brand I was looking for. I got a surfboard company and I'm going for this brand here. Click on that. They probably have a link to that exact palette. There's the hex codes right there. There it is. So they generated a palette for you and you can use it. So I recommend checking out a tool like that. So folks, I hope this was 
useful to you. I hope this little mini study on color and color theory in web design was helpful to you. Understand the essentials, the 20% that gets you 80% of the way. You don't need to know everything about color theory in order to make a good color scheme. Remember, colors convey meaning and purpose and emotion. When in doubt, keep it simple and use a tool like coolors.co to understand what colors work. Once you get the basics of this, move on and revisit as you go. I hope this was helpful to you. I appreciate you. Let me know in the comments if you like this, if you have any questions about color. And also, if you have any questions about this course and this free web design course and what you would like to see next, make sure that you like, subscribe. Actually, let me just do that. Like, subscribe hit the notification bell so you're notified when we upload a new lesson, which at this point is every week, sometimes twice a week. And yeah, comment, comment down there and let me know what you thought about this and we'll catch you in another web design lesson. Cheers. I've been Brad Hussey and I'll catch you next time.